Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is going to be my December wrap up. I read nine books in the month of December and I really enjoyed most of them. It was an amazing reading month. There were two books on my TBR that I didn't finish. Inside the Orions, I didn't get to yet. I'm about to start it and Tales of the North are about halfway through, but I finished nine books and I'm very excited to talk about them. So let's do that. The first book that I read in the month of December was Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. This is the first book in the Three Dark Crowns series. I actually ended up reading all four books this month, so I want to kind of talk about them all together. So the first book, Three Dark Crowns, I gave a 9 out of 10. The second book, One Dark Throne, I gave an 8.5 out of 10. The third book, Two Dark Reigns, I gave an 8 out of 10. And the fourth and final book, Five Dark Fates, I gave a 7.5 out of 10. So as you can see, unfortunately, my enjoyment of them kept dwindling. This is a dark fantasy series. Essentially, every generation, the queen gives birth to three triplets that each have a different magical ability. And then those three triplets, once they come of age, have to murder each other and the one that survives becomes the queen. <laughs> Trigger warnings for mild animal abuse, self-harm in the form of blood magic, killing infants specifically by drowning, hunting is mentioned a number of time, and implied sexual harassment. I really liked this series, especially the first book, because I couldn't guess what would happen. I find a lot of times in books like this, you can kind of guess which one the author is setting up to be the main one and the one that you know is going to win, but things just kind of kept changing and I couldn't quite figure it out. The first book though obviously was by far my favorite. I really liked the concept. I really liked not knowing what was going to happen. But I think that the series was honestly too long. I don't think it needed to be four books. I think that a duology would have been perfectly adequate. I feel like the further we got in as each book progressed, it kept adding new elements. But instead of being like exciting additions to the plot or plot twists that I didn't expect, it just felt like we were getting further and further away from what I liked or spinning around in circles. And the ending of the series, I feel like it made a lot of things feel like a waste of time. And overall, I just didn't feel like it lived up to the expectations that I had in the beginning. Side note also, I listened to the last three books on audiobook because I only physically owned the first one, and I didn't like the narrator at all, specifically when she voiced the male characters. She like tried to deepen her voice and it just sounded really weird and maybe that kind of affected my enjoyment of it too, but overall the plot just really kind of kept going downhill, but the first book I really enjoyed and I'm still glad that I read the series. The, I guess, fifth book that I read this month was The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. This is the third and final book in the Poppy War trilogy. I gave this a nine and a half out of ten. I love this series so much. The series is about a poor war orphan from really shitty circumstances who ends up working her ass off to get into this really elite military academy. When she's there, nobody accepts her, they don't think she belongs there, etc. And then a war breaks out and now she is in that war. So the first half of the first book is in that training academy, and then the rest of the series is around this war. There are quite a few trigger warnings for this, although I feel like if you've got into the third book in the trilogy, this one isn't any more than the other two books. But either way, the trigger warnings include graphic violence, including against children, gore, animal abuse, rape and sexual assault, including against children, abortion or miscarriage, drug use, addiction, torture, self-harm. It's a lot. <laughs> and I say this every time, but all of those triggers are very prevalent themes and they're all very in your face, if that makes sense. I found this was a really exciting and amazing way to end the series. It wrapped up a lot of things and it left a lot of things loose and I think it had that perfect balance. There was one or two things, hi Comet, that I don't know, I just kind of thought there would be bigger deals or were just a little bit too quick in my opinion. I also absolutely loved the way that this ended because as we get closer and closer to the ending, I found it so hard to predict what was going to happen. I mean, this whole series I found was really unpredictable and every time I kind of think something's going to happen, it doesn't or something else comes up and I just found this kept me guessing and it kept me really excited and intrigued and I am very, very happy with this and it was a great way to end the series. The next book I read this month was Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. I ended up giving this a 9 out of 10. If you don't know, this is a Canadian classic about Anne, who is a orphan who ends up getting adopted by this brother and sister who never got married, never had kids of their own. And at first they wanted to adopt a boy to help them on the farm, but instead there's a miscommunication and they bring home Anne, who is this imaginative and creative and incredibly talkative child. And it's her settling in to this world with them and it was such a beautiful story. I will say minor trigger warnings for hints of previous child abuse and child neglect, but overall this is a very cute and whimsical story. I absolutely adored it. 
Also, as someone who's from Atlantic Canada, I'm from New Brunswick and this takes place in PEI, so it just has that small Atlantic Canada maritime feel that I just absolutely adore. I gave it actually a bonus point for that because it just made me so happy. And I think that's just the thing about this book. I just smiled the entire time. Anne is just such a great character and I absolutely loved it. I also recently started watching the Netflix show Anne with an E. I'm only on season two right now but Matilda absolutely loved it and recommended it to me and I'm really really enjoying it. The next book I read was Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I gave this a 9 out of 10. This is a story of a girl named Alex who has had a pretty shitty life so far. At one point there is an accident, she wakes up in the hospital, and suddenly someone offers her a full scholarship to Yale. The twist is that she can see ghosts and she's going there to be part of one of their secret societies that kind of keeps an eye on all of the magic and the dark magic that's going on at the university. This book has a lot of really dark elements. Trigger warnings include rape, sexual assault, statutory rape, revenge porn, being drugged, magical compulsion for sexual purposes, drug use and drug abuse, accidental overdosing, abusive relationships, self-harm, and medical experiments. I really liked the dark, creepy, almost disturbing vibe of this. One thing that I'm kind of surprised that I liked is that this is a very soft magic system. We never really fully understand its limitations, how it works, etc. And because it takes place so much in the real world, there isn't much world building. And it's usually something I don't like. I like a lot of really weird, excessive world building and I like a really hard magic system. But just because I loved the vibe and I was so intrigued with the story itself that I really didn't mind that at all. The one thing that I did mind is that for some reason, I don't know if it's just me, but I didn't realize it was part of a series I feel like this book was super hyped and I had heard so many people talk about it so I never even thought to really look into it further. I thought that I kind of knew enough to just go into it and it turns out that it's part of a series and the ending is such a cliffhanger and I was really annoyed because I was expecting to be done the book and all of a sudden I have to wait for another one and I don't even know when it's coming out. I just really liked this. It was very up my alley and it was great and I'm very excited and impatient for that next book. The next book I read was The Gutian Code by Becca C. Smith and Hannah McCord. This is the third and final book in their Love and Dark series and I gave this a 9 out of 10. I was lucky enough to get arcs for all three books in exchange for an honest review and I have loved my time reading this series. If you don't know it is about reincarnation and vampires and like the reincarnation of light against the embodiment of darkness and it's dark and gory and violent and I love it. <laughs> Trigger warnings include frequent blood and gore, graphic violence, torture, magical compulsion for sexual purposes, rape, and sexual assault. I feel like this is a really great way to end this series. It was a lot of action and one thing I was really impressed with is that we get introduced to so many more side characters but they never felt skimmed over. Like I feel like every single character got development and personality and it never took away from any other character. They just all very naturally shared the spotlight and got more developed and more depth to all of them and I really really liked that. My biggest complaint is that there were a couple of time skips that I found a little bit jarring or confusing. We would have a character on their way to somewheres and then the next scene would be mid-battle and I wasn't a huge fan of it but it was kind of paired with like an unreliable narrator questioning reality kind of thing. I'm not going to give anything away but I really like that trope so I wasn't a huge fan of it but it didn't necessarily detract from anything because it was paired with something I really loved so it kind of balanced itself out. I did find a couple scenes towards the end were a little bit cheesy but honestly after everything these characters went through and just all of the terrible things that they were put through and just all of the darkness I feel like they kind of earned just a little bit of sappiness in between so it was kind of just a nice refreshing like oh look things are actually okay for once. Overall, I absolutely loved the series. It was right up my alley and I'm really, really glad that I was able to get the arcs and to get these books and they were so great. And the final book that I read this month was Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer and I gave this an 8 out of 10. This is the story of a girl who is a witch in a very religious community and honestly there's a lot going on. She has recently been outed as bisexual, she is kind of struggling to control her OCD, there is a murder, there is new people coming into her coven, and she's trying to ascend to become a full witch. Trigger warnings for forced religion and implied religion based abuse, being outed, and some graphic violence. I really liked a lot of the elements in this book but I feel like this book almost did too much and it couldn't do any of the elements the justice they deserve. The murders kind of take the forefront for the most of it but there's so much else going on that you never quite understand who these people are or what they're doing and then you have her mother that's just coming back from a religious retreat. She's 
some sort of mentally ill and she got sent to this like religion camp for like 10 years and you never quite figure out a lot of the things because I feel like so many things are just mentioned and then we have to move on so quickly. Another thing is that I can't decide how I feel about the OCD rep in this. I know that it is own voices rep, which is something that I just always appreciate, but as far as the execution, again, I just feel like it didn't quite get the attention that I wanted it to, but to be fair, it's implied that she is at least in some stage of recovery, she's been going to therapy, and it's not very prevalent, but you can kind of pass it off as because she is coping with it, so it's not as prevalent in her mind, but I just feel like it should have been mentioned more I feel like I would have preferred if there was either less elements overall or a longer book, possibly duology, so that each element could get the attention it deserved. I will say one thing I really loved about this book is how short the chapters are. It made it just really fly by and I really liked the pacing. Another thing is that for romance in this, I feel like the characters didn't have that much chemistry together, but I mean at least it was queer. <laughs> Another thing that I really want to shout out just because like it really made me just really happy to see the romantic interest her ex is with them and she has made it very clear that she's not interested in getting back together with her and that it was a mistake and that she has no interest whatsoever in pursuing a relationship with this girl and at one point they're arguing and so her ex like pushes her up against the wall and kisses her and one thing that i really appreciated is that when she's telling the main character this the main character calls out that that's not okay and i feel like that's something that's really important to call out because even if it's just a kiss, even if it's two girls, even if it's someone you had a history with, even if it's hot, if it's unwanted and you have made it clear that it's unwanted, it's not okay. And I feel like that's something that really needs to be discussed more. You know, it doesn't have to be a 10 out of 10 to be not okay. Obviously there's a huge difference between misreading body language and just making a mistake and apologizing for it. But this character made it very, very clear that she wanted nothing to do with this girl and she still kissed her and forced herself upon her. And I just think that that was really refreshing that it got called out. So it really had nothing to do with the plot, but it was just another little element that I really enjoyed. And I feel like that kind of sums up my enjoyment of this book. It was a lot of little things that I really liked. Overall, the elements didn't quite come together right or get that balance that I wanted, but I liked all of them and that's why I still ended up giving it an 8 out of 10. So there you have it. Those are the nine books that I read in the month of December. I feel like I had a really great reading month. So that is going to be all for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please click the like button to let me know and subscribe to stay updated with the rest of my videos. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, usually reading or writing related. So I hope to see you guys next time and until then, have a great day. Bye!